ULES, low traffic neighbourhoods, green levy taxes, heat pumps by stealth, the march towards 15-minute cities, banning petrol and diesel vehicles, outlining, outlawing uh, gas boilers. In the months and years to come, those policies, part of the deranged march to nut zero, will become as unpopular as the poll tax. So the electoral opportunity for a party to stand up for the pocketbook and lifestyles of hardworking Brits over the doom-mongering climate cultists is now overwhelming. But who will have the guts to challenge the globalist orthodoxy and do what they know is right? We saw the possibilities on Friday. I mean, sure, it was a disastrous night for Rishi Sunak's Conservatives, but the widely predicted shellacking of the Tories did not happen in Uxbridge and South Ryslip for one reason. And one reason only. Failed London Mayor Sadiq Khan's ULES. A policy Labour Deputy Angela Rayner vows to now be rolled out throughout the country. Conservatives were the ones that started the ULES scheme and put us on this track. But both Labour and the Conservatives now need to really reflect on that and come up with a scheme. Because this isn't just about London. This is coming to towns and cities across the whole of the United Kingdom. Contrast that to the approach of levelling up Secretary Michael Gove, who warned against a religious crusade over environmental extremism, noting the evangelical approach of campaign groups. Plans to ditch the £118 hydrogen levy on fuel bills, uh, provide landlords more time to meet energy efficiency targets, and a so-called Aston Martin exemption to give small car makers longer to convert to electric before that insane deadline is a start, but it's not enough. The banning of petrol or diesel vehicles by 2030 must be scrapped altogether. It is a completely unrealistic, arbitrary target. Likewise, by the way, the ban on gas boilers by 2035, which will cause ordinary Brits just unbelievable pain. Now, that would set Sunak's stories apart from the green ideologues and Labour, like Khan who is refusing to back down and has made clear he will push ahead with the ULES expansion come what may. But earlier today, the Prime Minister appeared in two minds over where the Conservatives stand. Yes, we're going to make progress towards net zero, but we're going to do that in a proportionate and pragmatic way that doesn't unnecessarily give people more hassle and more costs in their life. That's what I'm not interested and prepared to do. Now, even if he did scale back on the green agenda, there's not an easy road for victory uh, for Sunak. Let's just be honest about it. The celebrated pollster, Matt Goodwin, made clear over the weekend the results are still catastrophic, with an average 21-point loss of support, swings not seen since New Labour in the 90s. As Goodwin warns, many of their own voters are now refusing to vote at all, much like they did in the late 1990s, sitting at home wondering where all the proper Conservatives have gone, then emailing me to say they're utterly fed up and want something radically different, as do we all. Sunak has no more time to steady the ship. The moment has come to be bold and reverse the net zero hellscape threatening economic calamity and lifestyle degradation on the folk who deserve that the least. And remember, the UK is already leading the developed world in cutting carbon emissions anyway. We've done our bit.